Hey guys, what's up? It's Brian from NaviUpgrade.com. I'm in my buddy Jackson's 2018 Focus ST today. It's an ST1. We're going to be putting Sync 3 in it. So for anybody who wants to do this upgrade, this is for the cars that are between 2015 and 2018, the Ford Focus. So let's get right on into it. Let's start taking this thing apart and get Sync 3 in his car. All right, guys, so we're going to try and get this done as, a, as quick as possible because it's going to be 107 degrees out today. It's morning, trying to get it done before it gets super bright out. So uh, first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to remove this piece around the shift boot. So pull from right here, and it pulls out just like that. And then you might need to use a trim, trim tool over on this side to pop these little clips out. And then finally, there's one last piece right over here that needs to be popped out. You can just pop that out just like that twist and it'll pop right out. Set it aside. And now what we're going to want to do is this is going to be the hardest piece to remove out of, out of this entire project. This is your passenger airbag light. So you want to come from the side here. This is honestly, I'm probably going to be wrestling with this for a good three to four minutes because it's literally that hard to take out. <laughs> Sometimes it's easiest just to kind of nudge a little screwdriver in between. My screwdriver is a little bit too big, so we can't do that. The good thing is that if you ever need to take your car apart again after doing, after taking this out, after you get it out the first time, it gets a lot easier. All right, so we got an edge. And then you kind of just have to pull, and then you have to try and wiggle this edge out. All right, we're on our way. It's gonna feel like you're gonna break this thing, but I guarantee you're not. All right, that entire piece is out. There's a clip back here, unclip it. Set this aside. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring out a T25 Torx bit, and there is a screw down here. Set it in your cup holder. Now, there's a screw here. Sorry, I'm sweating already, so. Hot, hot day, I think it's already in the 90s. Not even, not even 11 a.m. And then there's two screws up here. And then finally the last screw right here. All right, next you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna remove your shift knob. Pop out the spring. Set it in a safe place. I'm gonna put it in our side cubby here. And now what we wanna do is we wanna take around here, and lift up just like that. So I'm popping it out just like that. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to come back here and there's a bunch of connectors. Black connector, blue connector, another black connector, smaller. And there's a main uh, HVAC connector right here. Pop that out. And now you're left with a USB connection. You can take your trim tool. And this is kind of going to be hard for you guys to see, but um, there's two plastic clips that hold in the USB. You're going to want to pry them apart in opposite directions. Or sometimes if I can't get it out, sometimes I just like to take the entire shifter off just like that, and then kind of set this down. Actually, let's see if we can get it off. It's a very difficult piece to get off. Hopefully you can see a little bit better there. All right, so there's a clip right here. There's also a clip at the bottom, but the, the bottom one's a hard one to get. Oh, there we go. See, pop right out. We're good. 
Now we can disconnect the traction control button down here. I'm just gonna use my Torx bit right here to push down on the little tab right there. And then there's one more. Uh, sorry, this is for traction control. That one was for uh, power. Now oh, there's that button right there. Click that, set this entire unit aside. And now we're left right here. This is gonna be really hard to get off again, just like that piece. So you're just gonna have to wiggle it. Uh, you're gonna have to pull on it pretty hard. It's gonna feel like you're gonna break it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so um, keep in mind your, uh, your airbag light, warning light, it needs to come through here. So don't pull on it until you get that out. And then you have one more clip right here. Pull on that. Set this aside, you're not gonna be using it again. All right, and next step is going to be uh, removing this entire unit. It's very similar to the 2013 or 2012 to 2014 models. Uh, we're just going to be removing it from its housing right here. So they're all still T25 bits. Don't lose your screws. And just to get it off now, this is your ACM, which is your audio control module. We're gonna take that off right now. All right, so if you push on the screen, actually let's take the whole, whole unit out. There's a swing latch harness. Actually, let me, uh, I'm going to pop off the CD player here, just like that. All right. Three connections back here on the CD player. Pop. Pop, and then pop. We're going to be discarding this because there's actually no CD player in the 2018. <laughs> so what's funny is that Ford was being so cheap in their final model year end is that they started getting rid of a whole bunch of extra stuff that they deemed unnecessary. The CD player was one of them. So uh, Jason actually had, Jackson, sorry. <laughs> Jackson has a new uh, CD player from a uh, ST2, ST3. We're gonna be putting that in and that's gonna give him HD radio and a heck of a lot better audio quality than this hunk of junk. So he's going to throw this away someday <laughs> and then uh, so what we have here is this is our four inch screen we hate this thing so this is your uh, 12 pin screen connector just push down on it like that there's a swing latch okay so see this this actually swings down in this direction so we're gonna push in on this little tab here gonna swing down just like that pull out so the side sell it on eBay get rid of it do whatever all right, now let's jump right on into the harness. All right, guys. So this is what your uh, all right, guys. This is what your Sync Three upgrade package will look like when it comes from NaviUpgrade.com. I already have mine open because I'm saving the package for somebody else. And um, if you pull it out, there is your wiring harness. I always wrap them like this. So if you unwrap this. you'll be ready to start installing. And then you'll also have this in there. This is your hazard switch adapter. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that this guy plugs in here, just like that. That's usually the first thing I do so we don't get confused later down the line. And uh, we're just going to untuck this from right here. And we're going to make it run into the back of the car instead, into the, into the cubby back here. And now we don't get confused with anything. So now what we're going to do, oh, the other thing I forgot to mention is inside of your package, everybody gets a Navi upgrade sticker. So if you want to put it on your car, so be it. If you want to throw it away, so be it. Let's go over the different ends of the Sync 3 harness. So your longest end, which is about six feet long, is your hub power connector. So that's your hub power connector. And then next, 
we have an RCA jack. So if you're pre-facelift, you can actually just plug in a rear facing camera uh, if you don't have one in your car and we can get you programmed up for that. Uh, next, this is your 12 pin four inch screen adapting connector. And then trailing off of that, we have your new uh, Sync 3 panel connector so you can control the new audio controls with your uh, upgrade. And then here is the Sync 3 APIM connector. And then finally, this is your original APIM connector and it goes down to your original APIM box down here. All right, so what we're gonna first do is we're going to take our Sync 1 4 inch APIM connector and we're going to find our this piece right here so for the hub power and what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to feed it down through here okay you can keep pulling on this guy right here for your uh, sync 3 hub power and all the rest stays up here all right, so the first step of connecting anything in your SYNC 3 upgrade is going to be connecting in your A-pin box down here. So what we're gonna do is there is another swing latch, very similar to this. So it's going to be in a position like this on your box down here. You're gonna to wanna to push in on the tab, swing the latch out, and that's gonna push the connector out. So let me see if we can get an angle that'll show you that. All right, so if you could see, I'm gonna reach my hand down in here like this and I'm going to push up here. Oops, it's hard to see. Let's see if there's that. And I'm going to swing this latch back just like that. And then I'm going to unplug it just like that. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our adapting harness. And as you can see, there are three little marks right here. And you can see there's three little marks right here. So this just plugs in just like this connects in you push 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 and then once it latches in once it starts getting latched you can just pull on that and it'll lock right into place just like that perfect okay now we'll just tuck this away and the next step is sorry excuse me All right, so this is already put together. What we're going to do is we're going to feed our 12 pin connector like this up through here, just like that. I'm going to set this in right here, holding onto the entire module. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this, put it together just like that. As you push, the swing latch will come back and then you just push it all the way and it'll lock right in place. This is your main power for our SYNC 3. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our SYNC 3 power APIM connector right here. We're gonna pull it up through the, um, through the bracket for the screen right here. And we're going to connect it in. But make sure that this latch, it needs to be swung down like that. So make sure it's in that position. And as you can see, three little lines right here, three little lines right here. Oopsies. And just push in just like that. Once it latches, you're good. And now, as you can see, we have screen power. So if I turn the car on all the way, there we go. This unit is a non-navigation unit, um, but we're gonna get them all set up here and we're gonna put Sync 3.4 on it and get them all set up. All right, so that's half of the process right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the car off. I'm going to open a door so this thing turns off. Okay, let it turn off. And the next thing that I want to do is I want to start running my USB uh, connectors. All right, on the 15 to 18, since you do have a front USB, I always recommend that you get a USB extension. So what I have here is I have a male to female mini USB cord, and this is about five feet in length. You can find this on my site. Uh, there's a link to Amazon on there. And then we're also using our standard, what we always use, our uh, six foot mini USB to mini USB male, and that's going to power our hub. So essentially 
let me break it down for you. This mail to mail is going from your screen to your hub. And then this mail to female is going mail end from the hub, female end down here to your black box. And I'll show you how to connect it all up right now. First thing I'm going to do, because I do not want to spend all day uh, fishing wires, is I'm going to take my uh, hub power cable right here, and I'm going to take a zip tie right about here. I'm gonna pull the mail to mail bit farther, because it needs to come all the way up here. And I'm going to take a zip tie Zip tie it right here. That should make it so that doesn't move. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to the end of all these right here. And we're going to put another zip tie at the end. This is gonna make it so we can feed it all a lot easier. Thanks to Jackson for uh, helping out with the camera today, very helpful. All right, um, so this is all ready to run. So now that we have all of our USBs right here, what we're going to do, and our USB power, we're going to come down here, reach down until it comes down through here, pull off all the excess slack, Good, there. And now what you're gonna wanna do is we're going to take these, I'm gonna get out of the car. I'm going to pull my seat all the way forward. I'm going to fish the lines back through here, just like that. Okay, so there's a right way to do this and there's a wrong way to do this. The wrong way is the way I do it because I can never get this thing to pop up right. So, um, to take the back panel off of your center console, there's these two tabs right here. And I've, I've literally, I've seen it done. I've never been able to do it myself. These two tabs pop up and there's two T8 bits back there. But uh, I've never been able to do that. So let me show you how to do it the wrong way. So uh, normally you take those off, unscrew them, and you'd be good to go to pop this entire unit off. But let's show you how to do it the wrong way. So this is the wrong way to do it. We're actually gonna break those tabs back there, but don't worry because when you uh, put it back on, there's really strong connector clips back in here that make it so that it stays on just perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull from this tray down here and we're just keep pulling. There's one tab broken and there's the other tab broken. Lift up here and it kind of wiggles out just like that. And as you can see, we broke the tabs right there, right there. These four clips are strong enough to keep the whole thing on. I've had it done on my car for ages. It's never fallen off, no issues or at all. So now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, reach up here. So what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna try and pop out the original hub. Um, this can be a little bit of a painful process because uh, there's very sharp plastic edges on the bottom. I would suggest that you wear gloves. I've got given myself many blood blisters from doing this before. Uh, we're gonna see if we can get this sucker out. There we go. All right, got my hands a little bit. And then remember that clip that we did in the front for the, uh, for the front USB? Got a same one back here. And we're gonna pry up on this guy. Pry up on this guy. Until it's able to pop out. All right, so first thing, I'm gonna wanna come in here and then pry up on this. I've never been able to, ah! All right, that just broke, that's okay. Um, we're prying up on this little tab here because we're trying to get this USB connection out. It's clipped on on both sides. Very difficult to get out um, without breaking this entire little module. I wouldn't worry about it because these modules are literally a dime a dozen on eBay. That's literally just an adapter for a USB cable. Um, 
All right, pulled on it. See, as we, as you can tell, we just totally mangled this thing. Um, if you want, you can bend it all back and still reuse it later if you decide to go back to stock. But yeah, oh, and I cut myself. Nice, awesome. All right, so we have our wires again, remember? Uh, see that there is a bolt right here. We're gonna wanna feed these up uh, kind of behind the bolt here so that we don't have to wrap around the bolt. And now since we are totally, uh, totally open back here, we can reach back in there, grab them, pull them up, and then get it all nice and taut. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to push these, sorry, if you wanna get up here, I'm gonna pull these through just like that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to plug in my hub power and then I'm going to wait on these things for a few minutes because I need to figure out which one is for the screen and which one's for the hub because it goes in a certain order. This one goes to the screen. This one goes to your front USB. So keep that in mind. So the one diagonal from the power goes to your screen. The one right next to your power goes to your front hub. We have this all set up here. We don't need to be in here anymore. So we're just going to put this all back. Um, remember tray goes on the bottom so come up here just like that and then click it in at the bottom and like I said it doesn't even want to come out so I don't even think that those front screws were really worth anything so if you want to break it when you pull it out it's not the right thing to do but it works all right so moving back up to the front here we're gonna finish off our uh, USB installation so what we're gonna do is there's a tab right here there's a black connector. I don't know if you can see. You can see the gray one for sure. Gray connector, black connector. Come with your finger on the back and push on the tab until it pops out. And what you're gonna see is you're gonna see a connection like this. All we're gonna do is we're going to extend that using our uh, male to female connector, just like that. And that's gonna give us hub power at the front. Now we have our uh, other end of our male to male. I'm going to pop this out right here. I'm going to feed it back up through the back here, just like that, Oopsies. and uh, feed it up through here again, and then you have your bot connector right there, and what we're going to do is we're going to just pop it in right there, and it'll fit in very nice and snug. Now what we're going to do, set it right here, and we're coming off to our GPS antenna. So our GPS antenna is... Uh, just needs to be unwound a little bit. We don't need a lot of room, so I'm just gonna take one strand out just like that. Uh, this is meant so that you can put it anywhere in your car, but we're just gonna put it right up on the dash itself, so not too concerned. Wrap that all away. And uh, we have our 3M sticky pad on there already. I'm gonna pull this forward just like that. And we're going to take our connector. This is your, uh, the release tab. The release tab faces downwards and it pops in just like that. Finally, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna find a nice spot for our 3M sticky pad here. Get it off. All right, get there. And then we're gonna reach back here. You're not really gonna be able to see where I'm going here, but uh, I'm gonna reach back kind of up next to our gauge pod here if you're in an ST. And uh, I'm just gonna pop it in right there give it a lot of pressure upwards. As you can see, I'm flexing the entire dash here. And uh, that should be good. Now, all we need to do is we need to connect in our, uh, you know what we need to do? Unfortunately, because, uh, because we already have this mounted on, we need to run our hazard switch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take our ACM off. Just like that. Two screws right here. Set them in the tray. Now pop this guy off. Just like that. Set it aside. And now let's get the entire unit mounted so we're ready to go. Make sure that your hazard switch is on the bottom and make sure that everything else is in place. So that you're ready to go. So always double check your connections. You don't want to be tearing this thing apart again. Make sure you have this guy. I have a lot of people calling me forgetting to plug this guy in. This is main power for 
sink three. All right, so what we're gonna do is, as you can see, grooves. Groove right here, and there's a groove right here. Now check it out, on here, notch right here, sorry, not a notch, but a little ridge right here, ridge right here, ridge right here. What you're gonna wanna do is come in just like here, find the little grooves and line them up with the notches, or sorry, the, the, um, the ridges. And as you do that, make sure all of your wires are out of the way. Might be a little bit tricky at first, but there we go, just like that. And I just need to double check that our wires aren't, aren't getting in the way, because I think that they might be right now. As you can see, there's a little bit of resistance. We don't want that. And uh, it might help if you pull your uh, ACM connectors forward. So if you pull them forward just like this, oops, I'm caught all these other wires. Pull them forward just like this, that leaves less wires out here in the back. And uh, thank you, Jackson. So we get them lined up back in those grooves again, down here. And it clicks in just like that. Now, uh, what we want to do is I'm going to start screwing in the four screws that hold on the sink three bracket. So you've got um, got one, and then you've got uh, two right there, and same side, three, and then the last one down here is four. So I'm gonna start with the ones on my side. bottom two first because they're arguably the easiest to get to. Right there. This be very careful you're gonna want to hold the screw with your index finger as you start it otherwise you're more more than likely going to drop the screw. Alright that one's done and finally as you can see, holding with index finger, going back in here, finding the hole. I've done this so many times that I just know where it is. <laughs> now, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our ACM, our new audio control module, and as you can see, you can differentiate the uh, Sirius versions and the HD radio versions, so the premium car versions, because they have the yellow tab right there. So if uh, Jackson were to want to add in Sirius XM radio, he just needs to add an antenna. I do not recommend that because uh, Sirius, Sirius XM radio sucks. And the audio quality in Ford cars is just absolutely atrocious. I would not recommend it. But if you have to have it, then you gotta have it, so. All right, so next, we're gonna plug in these guys. Plug one, plug two. You can hear, the, hear it starting up. Two. And finally, uh, we've got our radio. So radio plugs into the black port right there, uh, and the tab goes facing up, just like that. Plug it in just like that, and uh, make sure everything else is stuck back on in here. Uh, as you can see, this is your new uh, Sync 3 uh, controller. Uh, connector so what we're going to do is we're going to place this guy right where the old one was down in here right where your uh, where your airbag light connector is so that's in there and now remember this guy hazard switch connector what you're going to want to do is this needs to run over on top of your ACM just like this just like that and then as you push it back Make sure that we, oh, we must be hitting something. Um, I think we're, we might have a couple wires in the way. So always double check your wire clearances. And push back again. All right. We're mounted up. Now we're gonna take our two screws for the ACM. Feed this back in here just a little bit.
Okay, now we're ready to start putting the car back together. Let's double check that everything still turns on. All right, so next thing's next. We're gonna plug in our fascia. So we have our connector right here. Tab goes facing up, connects in right there. We have our hazard switch right here. Uh, this piece right here where the switch is goes facing the driver's side, or sorry, not switch, but where this little lever is on the connector that goes facing driver's side. Connects in there just like that. Hazard switch works, good to go there. And now you just kind of feed these wires back in tuck in and then make sure that uh, we feed the wires in as it goes this is a very important step remember your um, remember your passenger airbag warning light this needs to come up through here and come through that just like that before you can plug it in otherwise you're gonna have to tear the whole thing apart again it's not gonna be fun all right just give it some pressure here and uh, we're good to go to start putting the rest of this thing back together all right, so now that we're plugged in here, we're gonna want to make sure that we have our uh, USBs in on the right direction. So um, uh, we're going to plug in Jackson's iPhone here. So uh, that's plugged in right here. And we're gonna plug Jackson's iPhone in right here. All right, nothing's gonna happen because we don't have anything plugged in. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test which of these cords uh, Apple CarPlay shows up on when connected to the diagonal port here. So uh, we're going to plug in here. And as you can see, as you can see, that was the right one. So Apple CarPlay popped up. So we can press continue, agree, and now uh, we know that. Uh, <laughs> So now that we know that, so now that we know that that's the right cable for uh, going straight to the A pin module, we can actually plug in our other one right here. As you can see, goes on like that. And now we can set our uh, module in place once I get his iPhone cable out of the way. Uh, so as you can see, there's two diagonal little notches right there, and right here there's two diagonal little notches right there. So that's the right way that it goes. Or you can tell by the USB signal being towards the front of the car. Just pop it in place, lock it, and uh, we can plug his iPhone cable back in. Close it all up. And now let's get back to putting the rest of the car back together. All right, so we have our bottom trim piece here. What we're gonna do is, uh, if you have a manual car, this is your reverse lockout. So six speed reverse lockout. Um, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want to feed it through just like that, bring it down until it comes through there. And now we're gonna start plugging in all the rest of the stuff. So blue connector, connection goes right, uh, excuse me, goes right there. And then we have our main HVAC connector for power right here. Oh, now we have air, and then we got that right there, and we got one more right here. Oops, nope. So this is our USB cable, and we can just pop this guy right back in here, just like that. And then we should have one more connector here somewhere. Where are you, connector? Right here. And this pops in just like that, right there. And then we can't forget our power on the bottom, so... Uh, We got power right here, uh, so that goes in just like that. Bottom piece comes in just like that. Click in, and then uh, get in with your tools out of the way, like me. Snaps into place just like that. And what we can do now is we can put our shift knob back on. All right, and uh, now, obviously, 
we're going to finish off here by screwing the final five screws in. So I'm going to start with this guy here. Would you look at that? So, um, unfortunately, it looks like uh, Jackson's um, module here was missing a connector here. So that's not a huge deal. What we can do is we can actually take this off. This. And pop this guy out. And what we're going to do is we're going to take one of those connectors from. Uh, another from his old module. Sometimes if you need to take this apart, this rear uh, power is very, very hard to get, or this rear uh, hazard switch is very hard to get out, so you need to dig a little screwdriver into the clip here, and that'll release it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we have this trim piece out, sit in my lap. I'm going to grab his old trim piece here, and as you can see, we're missing one of these white clips. So all we're gonna do, is we're gonna take this white clip off, set this back aside, and then uh, we're gonna take it, click it in just like that. It's in place, now we're gonna put the car back together. All right, there's one, two, Fortunately, we noticed that before it was too late. And we're gonna, remember, always feed this through, otherwise you're gonna have a really difficult time once you get the car back together and realize that you don't have, a, have that on there. If you don't plug in your passenger airbag warning light, you actually get an airbag light on the, uh, on the dash. So you absolutely have to have it connected. Uh, all right, there we go. Now, let's get back to uh, installing all these screws. Make sure that, all right, shifter still works. We're still good there. All right. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're going to take our passenger airbag warning light. Obviously, passenger airbag reads up. Connect it in just like that. Feed cable back in through. Push with some decent strength around it and you're good to go. Finally, I'm gonna take this piece right here and uh, these little tabs, they need to line up and need to go in with each other. So. It all needs to come from the same angle and it clicks back in place just like that. Click in there, clicks in the side, and now we're good to go. We have uh, Sync 3 in a 2018 Ford Focus ST1. Now let's get right on into programming. All right, so most of the time I would recommend using one of these guys. Uh, they're great, they're cheap, but um, I just don't feel like using this today because I don't feel like flipping a switch or anything like that. So um, you can check out my other videos on how to use one of these. But today I'm going to be using a, an OBD Link MX Plus. You can get this on Amazon. Uh, I'll have a link in the description. This is a Bluetooth module. If your laptop has Bluetooth, I'd highly recommend getting one of these because then you don't have to switch between high and medium speed CAN bus. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna plug this into our OBD2, OBD2 port down here. All right. As long as the uh, green light's on and the blue light's blinking, we're good to go. Ah. All right, so as you can see, we don't have any volume controls. We don't have, uh, but as you can see, this all works. Oopsies. Source button got stuck, but you have to, there we go. Uh, but yeah, all this stuff works. So what we need to do is we need to come into Forescan. So on my laptop here, I'm going to open up Forescan. And because I already have my Bluetooth module set up, it's gonna automatically connect. Uh, we're gonna select that this is a 2018. It's going to connect to the car. And we're gonna let it read all the modules. This can take up to two to three minutes. 
if you're on like a, a car that has more modules, like say like a C Max or or something that has like parking modules or like trailer assist modules, anything like that, like trucks, it's gonna take longer because there's more modules to load up. But the reason why I like the OBD MX Plus so much is because it actually reads both medium speed and high speed CAN bus automatically. So uh, on this old controller, it'll ask you to switch this back and forth. But on the OBD MX, it just automatically switches it within the device itself. So you don't need to uh, load up anything else. Still loading up here. GPSM, and we're gonna call this Jackson's Oops, not 30, 2018 Focus ST Sync 3 upgrade. And we're gonna save this profile. So one thing to know, if you save a profile, uh, then that is, it's gonna save all the modules that it finds on the car so it can load up faster in the future. Um, but the problem is, is if you use one of these guys and you forget to go into your medium speed CAN bus and you save that profile, then what's gonna happen is, is you're not, the next time you load into the car, it's not going to find the medium speed CAN bus because it doesn't think there are any. So if you accidentally do that, what you need to do is you need to go into profiles here and then just delete the profile using the delete button right down there and selecting the right the right one here and then uh, obviously pressing the delete button. But uh, we already loaded up all of our correct modules. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this little configuration and programming chipset over here. And I'm going to start with um, our APIM. So our APIM is up here. We're gonna go into as-built format module configuration. Uh, changing configuration is potentially not safe. So just beware. Uh, car is a little bit low. We uh, probably should start the car. So we'll have the car running for this as we charge the battery just a little bit. We, we're gonna get a little AC going on in here because it's gonna be, we're probably into the hundreds already today. All right, so as you can see, we've got, uh, eight blocks. Blocks are separated by these little dividers here. We're going to go load all and we're going to go back into our downloads where we downloaded our uh, base to sync three programming files from my website. Oops, that's the wrong folder. Let's go back. We're going to go into Navi upgrade focus base to sync three and we're going to go into APIM as built files. In here uh, we have a non-navigation unit uh, so, and we do have HD radio and Sirius. So we need to select that we have a non-nav unit with HD radio and Sirius. Uh, we might need to turn Sirius off on this car though because we do not have the right antenna. So we'll load OK. It'll load, click Write All. Module configuration, this, completely, this actually will completely rewrite the module configuration. Are you sure? Yes, we're sure. Let it write. All right, that's good. Click OK. Now we're gonna go back to stop, and we're gonna go, it's, we're gonna come back into configuration and programming. This time we're gonna go back down into uh, ACM module configuration. Click play. And then uh, we're gonna go into load all. We're gonna go up, back into our downloads. And then we're going to go into uh, Navi upgrade, focus base to sync three again. ACM files this time, and we're going to go into HD Radio Sirius CD Player ABT. We're going to click OK, and we're going to write all. It's going to write all the changes. We're going to hear it restart in here. Oh, so here's an example. Uh, service procedure has been interrupted. This will happen sometimes. You just need to go to configuration and program again. Click ACM. OK. It's going to read the blocks. We're going to load all again. We're going to go back into our downloads. Back to those ACM as built files, HD radio, and we're going to write all again. It might do it again to us here. We'll see. Okay, blocks program successfully. Please cycle the ignition off and then back on. So we're good. We're going to turn the car off. We're going to open up a door to turn off the SYNC 3 system. Okay, let it restart for a second. Now we're going to turn the car back on. Let SYNC 3 start again. All right. 
And now if we turn on our radio, we have full control over our uh, audio here. What we are going to do is because that's turned to colors, we're actually going to go in and we're going to update the entire system. But what I want to do first, before doing anything like this, I want to make sure that my, my steering wheel controls work, the source button works, okay, and then uh, sound button works now, okay. Uh, as you can see, when we upgraded on an 18 Focus, audio quality goes through the roof. So it becomes a lot better because the ACM in the 18 Focus is just total garbage. All right, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna teach you guys how to get uh, navigation in your IPC cluster so that when you're driving, you'll have uh, navigation here. Um, it'll read in, I think it'll read in from Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but it might just be Android Auto. So we'll find out right now. Uh, I'm gonna click the stop button here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into configuration and programming again, and I'm going to go into body control module right here, B BDYCM, central configuration main. I'm gonna click the play button. It's gonna say Forescan will load a secondary bootloader to the module. This operation is not safe. Please make sure the following initial conditions are met and uh, we're good to go there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna load all the blocks up here. It's gonna start ringing all over your dash. You're gonna get a whole bunch of dash lights. It's gonna freak you out. I remember the first time I did this, um, I, I just got super scared. So uh, don't be afraid. We're gonna turn off the ignition right now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back in here. Let's click okay when it says turn the ignition off. And now we're gonna go, we're gonna come into engineering mode with all editable. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come down here. Give me one second, let me find out this. Okay. We're looking for a couple things. We're gonna do a couple things to this car while we have it in the body control module area. We're looking for navigation system. We're gonna go uh, navigation system. We're gonna go edit selected. And we're gonna go navigation system for USA and Canada. Yes. And then what we're going to do also while we're in here, just to uh, give Jackson some cool stuff, we're gonna give him global open and close windows. So we're gonna oh, enable that. And then let's see if there's anything else in here that we need. It looks like we're all good in here. Yep, we're all good in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to click right it's gonna say, please confirm these changes. We're gonna say yes. Please turn the ignition on, but don't start the engine. So I'm going to push the button so that we're on. And now we're gonna click right, and it's gonna take a couple minutes to do this. Uh, maybe not too long, let's find out. All right, now it's gonna load the secondary boot mo bootloader module. And it's start kind of dinging on the screen and all that stuff. It's gonna restart, it's doing all kinds of crazy stuff. All right, we're good there. All right, blocks programmed successfully, we're good. We're gonna click the stop button right here to get out of the central configuration. We're gonna go back here and we're gonna go into our IPC and uh, we're gonna go into IPC module configuration, click okay. All right, and then we're gonna do, all right, so we're good. Navigation repeater's already enabled on there, so we're good to go. Um, nothing else to do here. We're just gonna click stop and we're gonna go into information we're going to disconnect and the car is ready to go. All right, so as you can see, we have uh, everything working here, audio controls, everything like that. Um, since it's non-nav, I actually have a USB drive here so we can update this, which is sync version. Let's find out right now. We're currently on sync version 3.0. We're gonna move it to sync version 3.4. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our USB here and I'm going to come into our back here and I'm going to plug in our USB and then go up here. Come, and then it's gonna say updating system software. And we just wait a couple seconds. It's gonna restart the system. And here's where the scary part happens. We're actually going to completely uh, rewrite the entire module. So if we look here, uh, screen goes blank and now when it pops back up, 
I'll show you what we have. It goes into a completely uh, new write module. It's going to reach repartition re the e, uh, MCC, uh, MMC, and uh, it's going to extract the apps package. And we're going to load up Sync version 3.4 so that uh, Jackson's on the latest version of Sync, and uh, we're going to be good to go here. This takes about six minutes on a non-navigation unit, but on the navigation unit, prepare to go for a nice long drive because uh, the navigation unit is uh, almost four or five times the package size. So you're looking at like a 29 minute, 27 to 29 minute uh, time period for the update. Um, but other than that, it's pretty easy and uh, you'll be good to go right after this. All right, so we removed our USB and now it's gonna restart. It's gonna flash a couple times and wait for it to reboot here. Ta -ta -ta, ta -ta -ta. Come on. All right, we got our ST boot screen. And we got sync. 3.4! Alright, we'll close this. And uh, we have HD radio now, which is pretty cool. Oh shit, really? Yeah. Hey, this is your boy Ty Dallas, uh, <laughs> so you get like double the amount of radio stations now, which is pretty sweet. And so I don't get copyright infringement on YouTube. We'll turn that down. And yeah, so now if we go into settings. Go, oh no, not radio. We're going to go into general. We're going to go into about sync. And uh, you can see our new sync version is version 3.4, built 20.021. And uh, we got everything up to date. And uh, we're ready to wrap this project up. All right, so that was installing Sync 3 onto a base model focus. Remember, this can be done on any base model focus, meaning you can do it on your ST, you can do it on your SE, you can do it on your Titanium, although I think the Titaniums, they all came with Sync 3. So, so be it. Anyways, so uh, the install is done. It's pretty easy install. If you need any parts or any assistance with your install, feel free to hit me up, info at navyupgrade.com, or check out my website, send an email through there. Uh, always happy to help you guys out. And if this video helped you out, please buy from my store and from my affiliate links on my YouTube video and on my website. Again, this is Nat Brian from NaviUpgrade.com. Talk to you later. See you next time.